right, welcome to that after show where uh, we talk about, I don't know, what are we talking about? I'm I wanted sure. to ask Jamie a question from the show. I didn't get a chance to get it in. Jamie, look, I've been to a bunch of hate breed shows, 75% of the crowds in the mosh pit. How do you deal with what stuff that went down with, you know, with Dimebag on stage and also with Randy Blythe with stage divers? Do you let them on stage now? Is it the rules have changed at a hate breed show? Because it's, it's insane, those shows. In the U.S., it's really hard. We, our insurance like, went through the roof, and we had to deal like, venue by venue. But in Europe, um, some places are a little more lenient. We, we did a show on my birthday last, I think it was last year in Switzerland, and I said, you know, it's my birthday. Can we just, it was a small crowd, maybe five or 600 people, and I said, can we have no barricade, and I'll tell everybody, be cool. If someone dives, catch them, which you would think would be, you know, the obvious thing to do, and then you see some, you know, 250 pound guy jump and people are like, <laughs> it's like the sea, the They're parting right. of the sea. But, um, but yeah, in the States, it's, it's really hard. Are you afraid of your safety though, when this is going on? Like what guy, you know, over in Europe, people coming on the stage? Um, not really, no. I mean, with, when we did the damage plan, when we did the Hapri damage plan tour, that guy had shown up at another show. In the Cincinnati show. Yeah, right. and it, I mean, it took a bunch of guys to get him out of there, and he was in the back area saying, you know, I'm gonna effing kill everybody, and I was out there. And, um, you know, that's when I thought, and we had some other, that was at the time, like, I was on TV, and those guys were doing the new band, and so there was, there was some times where there were some fans that got a little creepy or a little weird, but nothing where you would think someone would do something that drastic and that terrible. But, uh, but it's, since then, uh, it's, it's been pretty chill. And I think that the majority of fans have everybody's, you know. They have each other's backs. Yeah, they, they have everybody's safety in mind. And you don't see a lot. It's not like how it was in the late 90s where it was super violent, super crazy. A lot of, like when we used to play Lemoore's and Roseland, I mean, it, the whole place was just, beating the shit out of each other. It's a little Well, John, what about for <laughs> you? Because obviously not so much with Armored Saint because that doesn't really lend itself to the moshing and stage diving as much. But in your years in Anthrax, I mean, you must have seen some insane crowds. The tour we did with Pantera, um, 97, 98, uh, or 96, 97, we did a tour with Pantera. And um, there was, those were pretty crazy, needless to say. Yeah. Um, but actually, ironically enough, I think the biggest craziest song of the night was when we did Bring the Noise, um, even more than any, I will go on a limb and say even more than Pantera's show. And the reason was we kind of just, we, we kind of, we really instigated the whole audience and we would do, we would turn on the house lights on that song. So we said, you know, here's your chance, we build it up, big, you know, to do, and you know, we want to see this pig go the whole arena or whatever. And it was, we would, uh, would like there would be times where too? didn't you invite the crowd on stage? Well, I don't know what we did because on that tour because we probably couldn't because it was you know a lot of those venues were pretty big they were like you know small arenas and basketball venues whatever so I don't know if we ever they, they probably wouldn't be able to get to it because the security was preventing them but um, I think there was a few times during that tour where we kind of kind of stopped and were like, holy like it was. We might even stop playing, going, holy shit, look, uh, maybe that's a little too crazy out there. Right. It was pretty wild. And then I would do this thing where I jumped in the crowd on a fairly regular basis. I was going to say, that, that was uh, putting your life in your hands. Well, I, 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 I did this thing where <laughs> you know, I, I, I'll try to make it quick, but I, I had this really cool pair of shoes that I, li I liked, and I lost them by jumping in the crowd one time in Brazil. So I decided I wasn't going to ever do that again because I got the shoe back. So what happened was I would kind of do this like a strip tease in a sense, because I would take off all my stuff. Like I would climb on a, on a on the top of the PA and I would take everything off, and then that would everybody knew what was coming. So then they would all kind of converge in the in that area, and then I would jump off. So I knew, you know, I don't think anybody's not gonna. For one, I'm small, so then it's you catch yeah, me. Yeah, but it was like it was. But like I, I did go 40, off some pretty. Feet. I went off crazy. some pretty high things, yeah. and I would always my signature move was a flip. So I would do a flip. Yeah. 
So, the yeah. guy's worried about losing his shoes and he's 50 feet <laughs> yeah. off speakers. I like that. And Jelly's <laughs> like, I still need him for Armored Saint. <laughs> right, Will yeah. you stop it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I, I, I won't do that anymore. Well, plus, it's not the right band to do it. But it was it some pretty awesome moments. That's crazy. I, I got a question for Michael about yeah. your playing because, you know, I've watched the Speed Kills in, in, instructional videos oh, on YouTube so, along with 15 million other people. <laughs> how, how did do you develop that technique? I mean, are you, do you consider yourself ambidextrous. I mean, I know I can do certain things with both hands, like but I can't like what? Yeah. <laughs> well, well, you know, wash the dishes. I'm, I'm left-handed. I was born left-handed. I play piano. But I, when I learned guitar, there really, there was a thousand right-handed guitars to one lefty. But I think with, with the way I taught Speed Kills, I mean, I, I have a lot of famous students from Tom Morello to, you know, the list goes on and on. Even John Petrucci uh, used Jazz 3s because of my instructional stuff. But I really wanted to help other guitar players, and I always thought in rock, you know, when you look at other genres of music, you look at jazz, you look at blues, the music was here, the playing was here, and so nobody's going to write a better rock song than ACDC or Led Zeppelin, but I always felt there are virtuosos in rock that need to be up there in the level of the music, and that's what I always tried to do. Um, I, I studied jazz, but I love metal. I mean, I used to just love going on stage when I'd play over the neck, and you know, it just people went crazy. But I was good at taking big concepts and making them simple, and, and that's what happened with Speak Hills, the song uh, No Boundaries on there. I wrote a song just to help guitar players. I didn't even know it would get 15 you know, million plus views. It was just really to help. I mean, yeah. that was the focus of it, and the rest, you know. Joey, I, wanna, I want you to jump in just before we wrap up real quick, because um, in addition to Fate's Warning, you're on this Motor Sister record, which I love. And um, you're also uh, doing a lot of producing. You produced the new yep. Armored Saint record, right? Correct, yeah. And, I mean, that's an area that you're really sort of um, coming on in a little bit. You're working with some other bands. And it's something you really want to do, right? Yeah, I've, uh, I've done it off and on over the years uh, with uh, various different kinds of bands and artists and stuff. A lot, m a lot of independent stuff like that. Um, talking about Jack Frost over here in the audience. Uh, work I've worked with Jack on several Seven, seven Witches records and... We're working on a new record starting next month. So, um, yeah, I mean. Did you have an influence as far as a producer? Like, yeah, everybody has musical influences, but were there guys <laughs> you learned from or you heard what they were doing and were like, that's kind of like, you know, my blueprint for what I'd like to be as a producer? Um, that's a good question. I mean, I like, I like producers that really uh, bring out what the artist is and not have less of a stamp about what is their sound, you know? So... I mean, I, I like a lot of different producers from talking about these Sabbath records. Martin Birch was yeah, a right. huge influence just growing up. Like, how did he make all those records sound great? You know, Deep Purple Machine Head, he did that too, yeah. you know? Cool. Yeah. Jamie, wait, you, you got a new song out? Where could people get it? Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. New Josta I, solo. Yeah, first yeah, Josta. new Josta song in like four years. It's, uh, I have a band camp, which is really cool for any... Um, you know, a lot of aspiring musicians and indie musicians use it. I figured I would try it out since I'm in between record deals right now. It's uh, jostahq.bandcamp.com. And what's the name of the tune? It's called The Immortal. The Immortal. It's great. great and I got song. another one. I'm gonna, if, it, if it starts to go well, people can check out my podcast. I'm going to leak songs on the podcast. And then uh, I'm thinking about just releasing singles digitally from now until Christmas, maybe every two weeks or every month, because I have so many songs on the hard drive. And if people liked the first Joss album, the songs like the one I did with Zach Wild or the yeah. one I did with Randy from Lamb of God, if they like that material, this stuff is similar. But I've tried to, you know, up the playing and, um, you know, add things to my vocal arsenal. I've been telling people also to check out the, I told Eddie, check out the uh, Dio song. It didn't make the tribute CD, but it's on the iTunes version. I did a cover of Dio era Sabbath off a of Dehumanizer, a song called Buried Alive. Yeah, great. And that's, wow. the, uh, that's the bonus track on the iTunes, uh, the Dio uh, tribute. Cool. Very cool. Cool. Well, thank you for watching uh, that after show. Stay tuned for that after show after that. There's another after show? Yeah, we got to do another one. You're kidding me.